Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free, and in this video we're going to be using Shotcut to create some highlighted areas, or uh, rather we're going to make parts of the video dark and then mask out the part that we want to draw attention to. So we're going to be using um, masking, and first we just need to find a part of this video that we want to, uh, I'll just come to a part that we want to highlight. So maybe selecting this tool right here is a good place. Selecting the text tool, instead of having everything be visible and it's kind of hard to see the mouse right there, uh, we can highlight that. So I'm going to come up here and get a second video track. I'll right click and go to add video track. And then I'm going to go open other and go to color. And I'm just going to keep this as uh, it says transparent right now. I'll change the color to a black and go to actually we can do a opacity. Maybe I should do that. Let's do this one right here if we can and go to select. I haven't tried this yet. Okay, it doesn't do opacity, so this is just black. It looks like, uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to go into, we're going to drag this down to the timeline first, and then we'll select it. Oh, it did do opacity. Okay, great. So this is already it has some opacity. If it didn't, there's a filter called opacity we could add, and we just add uh, opacity, and then we can change the amount of opacity we want to put into this. But this is actually less steps, so we're not going to apply opacity because see, it's already, it's already made it so that we can kind of see through, but it's darker. And now we're going to add in a mask. So we'll go back to the beginning of the clip here and we'll go to filters and go to add and then we'll just search for mask. And there's a couple different ones, but we're going to do mask a simple shape because we're going to do a rectangle. And that creates this black rectangle. So what we need to do is I'm going to come in here so we can see it a little bit better. We click on the clip and then we uh, come over here to these settings and we can change uh, the location of it. So we change horizontal and vertical till this is right over top of the tool that we want. And then we change the size, the width and height over here so that it's kind of smaller. And you're seeing the problem, of course, is that it's uh, covering up what we want to see instead of exposing it. So we change this operation from overwrite to subtract. And then it shows the transparent background in there. And it also shows this. And we can fine tune. If you use your scroll wheel over top of the bar, it makes really large adjustments. Oh, that's rotation. We can reset that back to zero by clicking there. Uh, but if we go back to width, if we hover over and use our mouse wheel over top of the numbers with a percentage, it'll do a much more fine adjustment. So I can finally come in here uh, and I could type it in too. But I'll just quickly get this right to the place that I want. You can hear my squeaky mouse wheel. And maybe that's about good right there. And then what we can do is we can apply a fade. So right now, if we play this, it'll look like this. It just cuts over to that tool and we can move it. So I'll move this up a little bit. We'll move this back and I can play and it'll cut to that. I can, I can left click and hold and move this back and we can make it longer, make it display longer too, if we want to the whole thing. That's pretty good. And now we can apply a fade. And there's a couple ways to do that. We could just click on the clip and go into filters and add a fade. If we wanted to, a video fade. Or we can just, uh, if I get out of this, we can just come to the clip and hover over and this black circle appears. Left click and hold on that black circle and we can drag this out as long as we want the fade to happen at the beginning. And then the same thing at the end. And that'll fade in and out any audio or video associated with the clip. So now it fades. And then we need to click on the clip, go to those fade options. We don't need to fade audio because there's no audio on this clip, but the fade video in, we just want to make sure we click this checkbox, adjust opacity instead of a fade, uh, instead of fade with black. So on both of them, on the fade in and out, we'll make sure that's checked. And now it'll look really cool. It'll fade in the whole thing just like this. And then it shows it and it's going very slow right now. And then it'll fade it out. So maybe that's even too much. And then if we want to use this same uh, effect or this same mask with these settings, we can just right click and go to copy and we can go to another location in the video to where we're selecting another tool. Suppose we're selecting a tool over here. We can come to that location and just uh, go do control V to paste that. And now we have it pasted over here. And if it's a different tool, we can just come over to this vertical and change where that is at on the vertical. So we can change that. We can even come over here and select a tool across the top by changing vertical and horizontal. So whatever tool we happen to be selecting, we can just highlight that 
and it'll show that tool and it'll still apply it to, with, with the exact same phase and everything. And if we suppose we were doing something over here, we could even, it doesn't have to be just a, a rectangle. So we can come over here and change, or a square, we can change the uh, uh, width here to more of like a rectangular area to cover like a whole thing or width and height. And we can come down just like this. So this is a really cool feature. Um, you can do the same thing in Caden Live and in uh, all kinds of you know all kinds of different video editors that are open source as well. I just thought it's particularly easy to accomplish this in Shotcut. You can also save these presets over here, like these exact presets if you want to. You can come over here and go Preset and go Add, and then you can just call this um, Large Box or whatever you want to call it. And then that way, if, even after you close the program and get back in, you can always come to this preset. So if you change things over to here and you want that preset of where it was over there, you just come down to your uh, large box preset and it sets it up exactly how it was. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I hope you found this video informative and I look forward to catching you in the next video.